right. Welcome to the movie babies. Um, oh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Movie Babies, I'm Devin, I'm Sean, and it's the Trailer Review Show, looking at the latest and greatest, uh, we've old got... and new, from the real world <laughs> to the magic world, <laughs> and it's the uh, remix. Uh, I... Just have one point yep. to make. Mm-hmm. Okay. We gotta get better at not talking over each other. <laughs> After all of this time, I think you, we should at least have like a uh, high sign or something. Is this like a hmm? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How well, about we just hold up a middle finger? Like, I'm going to keep talking as long yeah. as my middle finger's up. From my understanding, that's why we have microphones, is so we can all mm-hmm. talk at once. <laughs> and, and it then just amplifies in volume. People love that yeah. podcast. And then, like, I'm in one ear and you're in the other ear. And then you're just kind of getting like a movie baby sandwich. Okay. Well, let's make a movie baby sandwich. Um, today's meet <laughs> is celebrity guest returning movie baby. <laughs> My well, being referred to as meat is really interesting. <laughs> You're a piece of meat to us. <laughs> Thank it's you, fine. guys. But a very knowledgeable piece Love of meat. Love coming on men's <laughs> podcast. Yeah, yeah. Jess is our, our resident rock expert, our resident Harry Potter expert, our resident Twitter expert. And Love guess what? Tweet. We got all three in this episode. <laughs> we do. We're knocking on all those doors. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Jess, I, where, where can people find you? <laughs> I'm on the internet. Right um, yeah. I'm on this couch right now. My Twitter handle is at Tholmes, T-H-O-L-M-Z. Cool. You were on a past episode where we reviewed The Rock's film Jumanji. Jumanji. And you discussed all the famous people you're, like, best friends with. <laughs> I have zero famous friends. Have you yeah. met any celebrities lately? Or tweeted at it? Or gotten yeah. tweeted at you want no. to update that list? I think the last celebrity to tweet at me was Jillian Anderson, and I just felt like I could, like, retire after that. So. I love how she did that, like, so nonchalantly, too. It was, like, <laughs> it was well, a big deal. The last amazing. one who did yeah, blah, blah, blah. it was great. You know, lately, the only, like, well-known people that have tweeted at me are authors because I will I'll like tweet at an author if I liked their book so mm-hmm. Celeste Ng who wrote Little Fires Everywhere um that Reese Witherspoon is making it into a miniseries oh yeah really good book she's awesome what author, about so. J.K. Rowling or The Rock or neither just... of them and I have tried to get Dwayne to at least like an Instagram pic but he never has that's the goal of this year 2018 <laughs> okay, yeah. it's the year we get yeah. The Rock I would love us. that. I would love that. Yeah. Would you settle for getting tweeted by him, like by doing something bad, like a <laughs> negative thing to get his attention? How no. badly do you want his attention? No, because he like shuts people down. Yeah, but that at would least make it's... me feel bad. Okay. Well, no, I would hate that. I okay. want him to think of me fondly. <laughs> okay. That's J.K. Important. Rowling could get mad at me. I don't care, but not not Dwayne. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll try to make that happen for you this year. We'll pull our movie baby strings. Jess, you're also a writer? I am a writer. Um, I write for Hello Giggles. I used to have a weekly column. I do not have a weekly column anymore because I got bored of doing it. That's how I used to get celebrities to tweet at me because I'd write about, like, George Costanza. But, yeah, no, I just write personal essays every once in a while, and I do, like, news stories on the weekends just for extra cash. So here's my question. When you are writing these articles about Uh celebrities, are you being generally positive towards them, or are you just kind of, like, hammering and, like, railing them and, like, talking smack about them it's almost entirely positive on uh, hello mm, giggles mm. which is like very clearly not a negative so. <laughs> hold that thought sean i yeah. think i found our problem sidebar yeah <laughs> sidebar here a little <laughs> let's have our chips on this sandwich mm-hmm. um i think we need to start talking positively about <laughs> A lot um, of bashing of movies we do on this show. That's okay to do, I think. I we I I think I've developed this personal uh, motto more strongly since last time we had you on. Mm-hmm. But I'm very much fond of the notion of destroying celebrity culture. Mm-hmm. Closer we get to people not being famous, yeah, the better yeah. we'll all be. I like that. Do you? What's your fascination with that apparatus of like celebrity? Like it gets your attention about these people. Yeah. So clearly, it's. Um, I guess it's, like, the same way of, like, I was just saying about an author that I like. Because it's less, like, you know, I can say Celeste Ng, and not everyone knows who I'm talking about, but, like, that was, like, special for me to say, I loved your book, and for her to say, thank you so much. Like, that feels, like, 
she wrote it for uh, for me, you know, for people to read, mm. and then like there's a connection there. Mm -hmm. So I feel the same way with celebrities, but it's like times a million because they're. I in general I agree with the celebrity thing, but I mean I let you know you you get attached to like the characters that people play, like Jillian Anderson, like mm. Dana Scully is really important to me. So to have her see something I wrote about Dana Scully and say like I liked it, and she like, was huge. positive about it. It's interesting with Dana Scully. We don't have to get into Dana Scully specifically, but there's some interesting um, the way that that character was written, especially looking back now and with the like revival episodes. Mm -hmm. They they just treat Scully pretty shitty, and I think oh. she I, uh, fans agree with that. Feminist fans agree with that. Uh, and she agrees with that, so I think she probably has some complicated feelings about Dana. Oh, Scully. So that's interesting because yeah, yeah I changed. haven't, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that whole series, mm -hmm. and my understanding was it was a very positive. Well, she's a bad. I mean, her character is badass, but like, yeah. there's a lot of like medical rape, like the things that they do to her. They just like beat her up uh, over and over again. Where it's like, why? So it why can't Scully ever catch a break? Majority men writers and men directors for that show, and it shows. So. But as far as the, like these tweet interactions, do yeah. that does that bring the celebrity status down? And I don't mean this in a negative way yeah. too towards you, but yeah. just to a reality where you're like, oh, peer. That's yeah. someone I just talked to. Kind of. I mean, there's certain people like Jillian Anderson does make herself appear. Like I know people that have met her. Like she mm -hmm. read and reviewed my friend's book. Like she's she seems like a normal celebrity for being like a very famous person. Not everybody. Like not Tom Hanks. You know, not Meryl Streep. Like, yeah. I don't feel like Jillian Anderson's peer either, but I do feel like if I needed to say something to her, she might see it. Like, yeah. Jason Alexander is another good example because mm -hmm. he, he'll just talk to you on the internet. But, you know, so there are some people that just, it, it feels like they're a little bit more approachable than others. I, and I think I would prefer that to be just people are well-known versus, like, they're put on this pedestal of, like, when yeah. they get a parking ticket, it's not, like, a massive thing, or, like, there doesn't need to be, like, an article about their bagel or whatever No, yeah, I, I agree with that, too. I mean, because I've never been, even when I was younger, I subscribed to Entertainment Weekly because I'm, like, a big entertainment fan, but I never mm -hmm. liked people because it's, like, I, you know, like you said, I don't care about, like, pictures of celebrities getting gas. I've never actually been, like, a gossip person I like I like to know what's going on with celebrities like I like to know what Leo's working on I don't really care who he's dating like I just don't that doesn't so, really so that's interesting so you're saying you don't necessarily like people doing ordinary things like getting gas but would you like animals doing ordinary <laughs> things like getting gas maybe no. you're <laughs> can you read a magazine animals? about a monkey filling up a banana car I with would gas? not I don't even I don't even look at pictures of baby animals on the internet okay I'm well a monster. yeah that weird <laughs> not for me that weird train of thought I just had goes into our first trailer <laughs> yes it does so let's complete the sandwich let's put some cheese on it trailer number one we're going to review the rocks. Newest film. One of his newest films. One of <laughs> That's true. Three. So we we're going to review this film and then found out, oh, he has another film coming yeah. out. In fact, when right. I went to go see Hurricane Heist, there was a trailer for Rampage followed immediately by a trailer for Skyscraper. Which is the other rock yeah, film. Yeah. Too much rock. Yeah, it's a lot of rock this year. Well, well let's just do a quick uh, review of Skyscraper, which we won't review in full. Uh, it's bad. Okay. <laughs> Die Hard with No Legs. Okay. Oh. Moving on. <laughs> Uh, Die Hard with One Leg. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what sandwich we're making right now. Right now, it's just like we're throwing all I'm the things on it. Making a puke sandwich. <laughs> going to review Rampage. We're also going to review the new trailer for the next installment in the Harry Potter prequel series. Fantastic Beasts 2, The Curse of Gremlin's Ghost. Is it home? <laughs> so close. Uh, the Curse of Grindelwald? The, the Crimes of... The, the Crimes of Grindelwald. 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 You well, can tell how excited I am about that one. Ring the bell. <laughs> ring the sandwich bell. I rescued George when he was two years old. He's not just a friend. He's family. Don't move a muscle. Are you crazy? No! Don't move! <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, very funny. You and I laughing at your joke. New guy, he no laugh. He cry. Intro battle. Despite all my rage, I am still going to see Rampage. Did oh. I bring back a, a pun intro battle? I haven't done that in a while. Rampage comes out on 420. Mm -hmm. Is the twist that all these mutations are because it's just like some stoners who don't have their weed supply and they've 
gone on a rampage. <laughs> I didn't get that from the trailer, but <laughs> maybe. It was in trailer two. It oh, was like okay. hidden. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse got a dumb pun or an opening statement on. <laughs> yeah, we'll take opening statements. <laughs> Is this based on a video game? Yeah. Does that based count as a statement? On is. a video game, Rampage, an old NES game, right? I think there was a Super Nintendo version too. I don't remember that at all, and I played a lot of video games. Rampage was the one that I enjoyed because instead of being like a soldier who's like shooting a monster in the mm. game, you're a monster eating soldiers. Are you the gorilla? And the you can the... be a gorilla, oh. a lizard, or a Flying wolf. wolf. I don't remember if the wolf flies in the... They added that for the movie. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a weird choice. Yeah. Very strange. 1986 is when this game came out. Oh, I yeah. loved it. There's it was an arcade version. Okay. It right. was it was surprisingly fun, was fun, but simple. Like you, It was kind of like a side-scroller where you just climbed up buildings and you just punched the buildings. It was just a chaos oh. destruction game. And so you just like push the A, 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 A. And then you can, like, eat the people as they try to escape, and there's, like, power-ups. And that's it. There's no, like, s story, really. Well, it is a rampage. Huh. It's, you know, like, you're going th through every city is a new level. So okay. you're trying to destroy the whole United States, which is an amazing <laughs> premise for a game. Yeah, okay. So, I could so get Jess, behind that. when you think of a video game, yeah. <laughs> you go, which one should I... Yeah. Repackage and reimagine right. for a film. Yeah, you go. Oh yeah, the one where you just punch a building over and over. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That makes sense now. I mean, destroying America. That seems like timely. Yeah, I don't know if they're going with that, but <laughs> well, I feel like that's our missing piece here. If these monsters, if you will, but really, who is monster? We know the answer to that. It's man. It's man. It's the guy from Walking Dead. But if <laughs> If, like, maybe President Trump made these creatures and it's, like, his secret weapon that he's, like, sending around the world to, like, mm -hmm. destroy. So he's, like, sending them to China and sending mm -hmm. them to, yeah. well, maybe not Russia because, you know, sending these rampage monsters to punch. Wow, yeah. I'm into it. They do explain why they're doing that in the... I mean, there's, like, a government agency that's, yeah. like, doing this gene splicing thing. Did you catch that Wait. part? Wait, okay, no, no, no. Cause yeah, the what, brunette lady. What I saw in the trailer was a meteor coming out, and the, the George well, of the Jungle monkey <laughs> sees it, and it yeah, sprays like, on him, and that changes him. It's a little so canister. It's, it's yeah, mutagen it's not, canister. Yeah, it's, like, not a star. It's a... It's not aliens? <laughs> it's not aliens. It's it would be aliens. cool if it was aliens yeah. being like, how do we want to destroy Earth for this movie? Yeah, how about like we a... super mutate <laughs> animals and have them destroy it for us? Yeah, okay. it was, yeah, you see the, like, the big, well-dressed, you know. Well, that makes more sense. Bad cats. There's a government conspiracy. Well, Jess, maybe I should have you explain the two trailers we just watched. Dwayne Johnson's character is best friends, more like family, with this white gorilla whose name is George. Right away, I have to stop you. Okay. I see that you specified that the gorilla was white. Is that a <laughs> political statement? That... No, it was just a little distracting, because, I don't know, are there white gorillas? Is that real? <laughs> Probably. I don't, but, know. It was I like, don't know. The white gorillas were the bad guys in the Congo movie. Oh, oh you're right. Yeah. So now I'm confused, because yeah. they're doing like a Coco loves nipples situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they're doing the sign language... Amy Good Gorilla, and yeah. but then it's the bad white gorilla. So now I don't know what to think. Well, you're supposed to think that George is a good guy. It's not his fault, whatever happens to him. <laughs> and what happens to him is he gets really big because of this government conspiracy. And then Dwayne wants to save the world by rescuing his friend George and all of the other huge, weird <laughs> animal creatures. Like That's unclear. I don't know if he's saving them all. They're battling. Scourge. It seemed like he was not stoked about the alligator. And no, flying the wolf. alligator and the and the flying wolf. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, so you see George climbing on buildings and mm -hmm. and Dwayne um, <laughs> climbing after him, <laughs> 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 trying to save the world. And of course, he's got a, a pretty sidekick who he probably falls in love with, who I believe is Naomi Harris from Moonlight. But, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, nice call. Yeah, as the same character, she's just like real, <laughs> real bad mom. Got her. <laughs> She stopped doing drugs, and now she's going to save the world. Well, just the yeah. reason why we brought you on this show <laughs> yes, is please because tell me why, we, why we brought you back. Why, why we brought here. you back. Yes, welcome back. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. 
You are a resident rock expert. That's a great title. You're the rock spurt. Mm -hmm. The you're, rock smith. What's the... You're a <laughs> resident movie baby geologist. Because you study the rock. Study the rock. You, <laughs> okay. You're like our celebrity gossip column. Oh, I That's love true. that. That's okay, true. good. So give us the deets of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who... I think this fact is right. It's like the highest grossing movie star or highest paid. What's the deal here? I think it is. I think he's. I think he was highest paid last year of male whew, uh, movie stars. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I mean, he did a lot of movies last year. He's gonna do a lot again this year. His IMDb is like crazy right now. Yeah, he's always working on a lot, and he's got like two TV shows, and he's just like I don't even know how he has time. He's got. He just knocked his. Wife up again, so. Whoa, we don't condone that. <laughs> That's not what that means. <laughs> uh, he's not laying yeah. the smack down? He got her pregnant. They're oh, so have he is child. laying the smack down. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, what is it about The Rock you think that um, calls to you? Um, oh, I don't think we actually talked about it last time I was on, but like when I first started loving Dwayne, or maybe we did, um, it was in the movie The Tooth Fairy. And I actually thought about that when we were watching this trailer because I wish he would do... He used to do those, like, corny family fun movies. And now, mm -hmm. and I understand he's, like, the new Will Smith and just does action stuff now. Started to watch movies like that, Tooth Fairy and that football one. Long the game story. plan. The game, game plan, plan. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought he was so, like, handsome, obviously, but also just so sweet. And then I just started following him everywhere he goes, like everybody else did. Now he's just somebody that we all love, which is great. But, mm -hmm. um, following him into yeah. his hotel room. Taking pictures of him when he's not looking. Following everywhere, trying to get him to tweet at me. And I'm really mad because um, my friend Heather, who loves Dwayne as much as I do, bought me Dwayne Johnson earrings and a Dwayne Johnson shirt for mm -hmm. Christmas. And I didn't, I didn't think to wear it either. So. Oh. Next time. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, well, it's, but... it's a podcast, so you can just... <laughs> that would have been for our benefit only. <laughs> well, Any yeah. sort of lie. <laughs> I'm not wearing the shirt, but I should be. Anyway, then when he joined the Fast movies, that was another big up for me, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a fan. Yeah. So, what, what do you yeah. think your favorite rock film is? I think it might still be The Tooth Fairy. Like, I really love that movie. I don't think I saw that one. It's really sweet. He plays like a... Is he a magical creature? No... <sighs> I was trying to remember if he was a st I think he's like a stepdad. He always was playing like a stepdad role. Mm -hmm. The man loves his family, is what he I He does can love tell. his family. Either animal or human. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like a touching, it made me cry at the end. I remember my so boyfriend you, made fun of me. You like your rock, you know, embodied as this big tough guy, but like sense of humor. Yeah. Funny. What was the Witch Mountain one that he was in where he's like kind of the funny, yeah. the, the race to Witch Mountain. Yeah. The Race to Witch Mountain. Yeah. Uh, I like that one yeah. too. Yeah. Anytime he gets to be kind of like silly, but also like very capable. Mm -hmm. Like, which seems like they're trying to do that with this movie too. He's like, gets all the funny lines. Yeah. It's been to, yeah. Like, I was thinking that too. It seems like they're trying to make it look comedic, but it's. Did you see Jumanji? I did. Did you like it? I did. I liked it a lot. Kind of did too. Did we, you? We, yeah. I think we all. Did more than we thought we were going to. Yeah, the, I think the, that. Yeah, the trailer was one of the worst we probably s saw. Because <laughs> yeah, just yeah, it's a ridiculous. Trailer. Yeah, you were there with us reviewing it. Yeah, and yeah, my main issue with that trailer was like, this isn't Jumanji. Yeah, and then they do a pretty decent job explaining how it's Jumanji within the film. Yeah, they do. I mean, I still think it's a little strange. Like we talked about the last time I was here, that they call it Jumanji. Because it doesn't really... The video game part is a little strange because it's like modern day, but they're playing an old video game system and that's fine. But like, I don't... I think it could have just been a funny movie without it being Jumanji. I agree. Sure. But I still thought it was great. Like, I really liked the movie. What about this? Let me movie baby this for you real fast. Okay. <laughs> so in Jumanji, they go into the video game, but mm -hmm. the video game they go into is Rampage. Hello. Now oh, we're talking. I like Franchise it. it. I like it. Also, I must say, The Rock, how many of The Rock movies is he in a jungle somewhere? That opening shot, I swear, is from the Jumanji movie. Well, so when I saw this trailer, <laughs> when I saw Wrinkle in Time, I was with my friend Heather, and she was like, oh, is this Jungle Cruise? Because he's doing Jungle Cruise movies. Oh, that's right. And I was like, no. And she's like, this isn't Jumanji. And I'm like, no, it's actually, I think it's that gorilla thing. And then, so, I mean, he's doing a lot of movies that are really similar. Um, What's his fascination with the jungle? Well, in the Jungle Cruise seems like it might be just like Jumanji. I mean, the plot line's similar. It's based on a Disney ride. Uh, it just seems like, what are you? 
is The Rock filming all these jungle movies at once? <laughs> and he has like a batch yeah, catalog. Like, maybe. Do, I'm doing some vacationing in the Amazon. Yeah. Just let's shoot these movies yeah. while I'm here. Might as well. I have problems with how this movie is adapting the game, which is a very yeah. nerdy thing to say. <laughs> no. Especially for Rampage, Sean. Well, at all the games you could say, it's like, this is the most freedom they could possibly have, I right? Don't, I don't like how they gave it so much heart, because that... <laughs> The one mm-hmm. thing I loved about that game, which appealed to, like, 10-year-old me, was the destruction and the, like, wanton violence of, like, I tur- like I'm a little guy, I eat this potion, I turn into a big gorilla, and then I destroy things, I smash the army, I smash the police, I smash all the institutions that I don't like. Yeah. And, like, that's a really f- interesting game for its, like, transgressiveness. But then they try to, like, sweeten the deal with, like, Oh, but he like teaches this girl a sign language, and they're like kind yeah. of a family. It's like I don't really want that in my rampage. Yeah, movie. I don't really understand. Based on what you said about the game so far, how why this movie is not about that? Because that sounds way cooler. Yeah, yeah, it was way cooler. I don't know, and a and a giant gorilla smashing America and all those institutions that no one's a fan of right now would be great timing. But mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. getting that from this. No, nope. I mean it's obviously anti-government, which is fine. But like, have we ever? Did we talk about this last time? Did we investigate The Rock's political leanings? We did. Me- yeah, we mentioned that. I think I mentioned that he leans conservative. Okay. And I don't know how true that is, though, because he does all the right, like, celebrity things. Like, uh, spoke out on International Day of Women. He, like, mm-hmm. speaks out about stuff that it's you don't typically associate with conservative people. So I'm not really sure what. But he's, like, fiscally Republican. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm not really sure where, where, where it lies. I mean, I don't think he voted for Donald Trump. Right. I'm going to. Put that out there. Did he vote for himself? <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> Just, are you going to vote for The Rock if he runs for office? No. Not, not to get Probably political not. here. I really am anti-celebrities running for office. Yeah. I don't think it's right. cute at all. Uh, Oprah, Even for Oprah doing. <laughs> and The Rock in, in, in 2000, whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's a very dangerous, slippery I don't like it. Slope. I mean, and when I say celebrities, I mean like major celebrities, like Cynthia Nixon running for governor of New York. I'm yeah. fine with that. But like Dwayne Johnson running for president, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> if he does, like, you got to do your time, right? Yeah. Go, go I mean, I state. think that the president should be a politician, not a fucking yeah. celebrity. Obviously, that's not going well. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dwayne. I'm not going to vote for him. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's the reason why it's not such like a sadistic movie because he's like, well, it's not very responsible to destroy cities and not be remorseful for yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, they've what they've done here, they basically turned this into the Planet of the Ape franchise. Yeah, it, yeah, similar. that's what it felt like to me too. And I'm wondering if... I, I think that franchise must have done pretty well. It did well enough for multiple uh, films in right. the series. That most recent one with Brie Larson, I think, did okay. Was that? Oh, con- that was Skull Island. Was that a Planet of the Ape or was that a King Kong? It might as well have been. It was a King Kong. Oh, it was yeah. a King Kong. That's the other problem of this movie. Is, <laughs> do we need another monkey as the main star? Got a lot star? of right now. Yeah, the King Kong and, um, and Planet of the Apes. I guess I got those mixed yeah. up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Do. that seems like the same thing. And then it's weird that his name is George because obviously there's like George of the Jungle. Yeah. Wait, is that that's a is that a gorilla thing? We were saying that the other day. <laughs> George of the Jungle is a man. Who it George? Hey. Curious George is a monkey. Yeah. What well, What else am I thinking of? George George Foreman. No. He's a monster. He's a human. Um, George of the Jungle is just like Tarzan. Yeah. Yeah. He's a there's guy. Oh yeah. There's not a gorilla. Well, it's so weird that his name is George. I mean, his, <laughs> Try something else. his friend was probably a gorilla. I'm sure he knew a gorilla, <laughs> but I'm not, I don't remember that movie really. We solved it. Okay, well, great. But that does go to, that does kind of bring up the point, in the game at least, you could choose either monster as your hero. Yeah. You could and, choose, oh, uh, between the... You could be these three yeah. uh, okay. giant monsters. And in the movie... Maybe the wolf is teaming up with uh, George of the Jungle, but the crocodile, who we do not see a lot of, seems to be the main villain because we get George and the crocodile mm-hmm. going at it. Well, you right. never you don't root for the crocodile in any anything, right? No. In any story, no. I don't no, think. Maybe no. in in the Peter Pan. Yeah, just, kinda. Yeah. Yeah. The Peter Pan. The Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess my question is then is how do you fix this movie? Like what's a more interesting premise than Rock having a baby gorilla as a son? <laughs> <laughs> well when you put it like 
that, I'm interested. <laughs> like, if he actually... I like that. <laughs> if, like, The Rock gave birth to a uh, baby and it's, like... It's just monkey trouble. It's just him trying to, yeah, like, they're parent that. There's so many monkey movies. You know, oh, my gosh. Um, I want to say there's go- that's going to be pretty problematic if The Rock, a black man, gave oh, yeah, birth okay. to point. a monkey. Good but... point. All right, yeah. Well, I think the way to make it better is what Sean was saying earlier about destroying the cops <laughs> and the government. <laughs> just everybody wants it. Just just I, would, I would pay money to watch that. If they suicide this, suicide squad this movie mm. where, like, the animals are, like, the hired guns... Mm. And, yeah, they're just sending them out on, like, missions. Yeah. At the very least, if they're going to try to, like, do the heart element of this story, yeah, I want there to be some type of twist on the, like, human-animal relationship trope that is in all of those other movies that we talked about. Mm-hmm. Like, we're the only two that understand each other, and, like, we can only speak to each other, and, yeah. like, we're besties. Like the Jurassic World franchise right now. Yeah. Yeah, because Chris Pratt talks to the raptors. And He's stuff. like, like best friend. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with Franco in the first Apes movie, too, it was like Caesar and him were buddies, mm-hmm. and that's why they had that bond. Well, I, I just like, I feel like there's a, n- a new way to go about like that buddy film, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Have it be uh, subverted somehow, like. Well, I like the idea. Okay, this is my pitch. Jess, do you have an idea too? No. Okay. I have zero ideas. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you can count what I'm about to say as an, I, an <laughs> I idea. I can't wait to hear it. Like a, okay. Not a good idea. Barely meeting the definition here. They bring in this element of the, what is it, the gene editing? The, muta- the Teenage Mutant Ninja thing. Turtle mutant gene? Yeah. And it makes you stronger, faster, more agilities mm-hmm. you have. <laughs> more agility. <laughs> more agility. <laughs> got all the agilities <laughs> one could have, like jumping and jumping. So this is what I want. Like, they're giving it to, uh, like, animals. Yeah. What if you give that to the rock? You get a giant the rock destroying you get, the city. <laughs> I want a giant rock at the end of this film. I'd watch it. Riding maybe, like, the wolf. Just like, headlocked all the yeah. animals. Yeah. Put them on timeout. <laughs> well, He's wrestling the crocodile. <laughs> is the gene splicing like experimentation with the animals supposed to be so humans can use it one day? Or is that just for it animals? Seems, I'm assuming the way that these movies all play out is like the army is trying to militarize animals right. by mutating them. Which weaponize like, it. To fight other. Yeah. yeah. destroy. What, yeah. What, what yeah. It, yeah. To go along with my idea, mm-hmm. and the more the rock is taking in this mutant in, he's getting dumber and dumber. <laughs> That's but, a movie, but Devin. the gorilla <laughs> is getting smarter and smarter. So now George has to take care of the rock. Oh, now we're talking. And now that's the connection. Is instead I think of that, like that's too many plot lines. <laughs> that would have to happen in the next movie. That'd be really long. It's, <laughs> really, it's a really long film. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord of the Rings territory. Oh, okay, great. But the <laughs> but yeah, we get to see George teaching the rock. Yeah. How to be a man again? Wow. Now That's you're on something. Yeah. I would settle for The Rock is like a e- eco-anarchist mm-hmm. who's like down with everything. I'm going to, me and my buddy, this gorilla, are going to mutate ourselves and we're going to just destroy the world. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's the movie that I want. Yeah. yeah, it's like switches halfway through and all of a sudden you're rooting against Wayne. Are we rooting mm-hmm. against the gorilla? Like, that's unclear to me too. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a ch- like a little bit of like the military is chasing around the gorilla trying to like neutralize him. But The Rock is like, don't, he's my friend, even yeah. though he's destroying the city. It's... I mean, it's Transformers. Yeah, it's just Transformers. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. my little... The, your little... What's his name? Not Joaquin Phoenix. Shia. Shia. A little Shia's running yeah. around and his Transformers are trying to get blowed up by the military. And he's like, mm-hmm. don't blow up my Transformers, yeah. please. Yeah. My best friend. They're my childhood toys. Oh, Shia. It's going to be hard to feel sympathetic towards The Rock. Yeah, the military's are like, we got to, he's too dangerous. We got to like, yeah. stop him. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he is too dangerous. I was, He destroyed yeah. that building. That's what I kept focusing on and they preface the first trailer by saying like they have Dwayne's character saying you know oh yeah I like animals more than people Mm -hmm. that's very that's like a very specific type of person so I think that by saying that it's going to get those people that feel that way to 
Wait, but like, I'm not one cat of the people. Yeah, the people I don't. Like I'm not nine cats. I yeah. am not like that's my mom is like that, and she doesn't like people, but she loves animals. Um, I am not like that, so that just, that kind of mindset really irritates me. Um, does, does in the film have the Rock having some sort of like babysitters club with all these weird mutant animals? What he's the babysitter of all the animals? Yeah, like and they they live. Is on that the how world. it's gonna end? Yeah. How about that? I want that to be that way. Like, if he is the crazy cat lady it embodied as the rock, just, like, letting the cages all open, like, go, but, zoo yeah. animals, destroy the world. Yeah. Like, you are my pets. <laughs> you are my, I understand the idea of thinking, like, an animal feels like family. I'm not, like, a monster. But if, mm-hmm. if my cat grew to be like a terrorist i would i'd yeah, say like take him. her out you know if your like, cat joins isis yeah, say, i can't you know can't i'd be like anymore. yeah i loved her oh, at a certain point but i want to watch that movie cat terrorist <laughs> my cat would be a bad terrorist she's pretty lazy but yeah i mean well it's like those questions i always get confused about those like sometimes you see these questions on like um facebook quizzes or whatever mm-hmm. like who do you feel sorry for like an animal being abused or like a human being abused what they ask and, <laughs> Yeah, and but a surprising amount of people feel more sorry about like animals being sure. mistreated. Oh, sure, yeah, that's and, a feel, yeah. thing. Yeah, and then, yeah. oh, he's like that. Too. He's like that too. He's he's like my cat's over people all the time. Yeah, in that film, uh, not the sacred deer, the sacred deer, the lobster. Mm-hmm. There's a very oh, yeah, violent animal scene mm-hmm. where it gets violently hurt, yeah. and people walked out of that film. They don't like animal. But no cruelty. one walking out of a film where like a human's getting oh yeah, mutilated. I mean that's, that's like a, um people feel like animals are more helpless than humans, which is true to a certain extent. Sure, a certain extent, but um that's like the dog in the um on the plane that just died. You know. Oh, I didn't hear about this dog uh, in an airplane. It was really sad. Probably shouldn't have been flying the airplane. The person, the person, uh, the flight attendant made these people put their dog into the overhead bin. What? Which is just like totally not. A policy uh, and the dog died obviously which is really sad but you know outrage all over the place all over the internet and then I mean this was Delta um, mm-hmm. or no I'm sorry I think it was United I just assumed it was Delta Let's just say but, it's all of them <laughs> it's all of them but you know immediately it was like that you know flight attendant was fired they had to change all these policies everything and then somebody was like that's cool like and I agree that they should change policies but what about uh, all the kids that die in schools and we're not changing policy. You know, it's yeah. kind of like one French bulldog dies on an airplane and everyone freaks People out. don't like that. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I think that's crazy. The dog obviously shouldn't have been in the overhead bin. But well, also, but if I, we change policies that fast because yeah. of a cute dog that's in high fashion right now dies, it's like. But I think you just solve like gun school violence. Thank you got to get <laughs> animals in every classroom. Yep. And as soon as one of those animals gets shot, there we go. Game yeah, I mean, there are some people like that, though. I mean, and I don't want to get too into like how I feel about veganism or anything, but I mean, there are people that definitely care more about you know animals or what people are doing with animals or what people are eating than people's lives. Well, I know a lot of vegans I've never heard say Black Lives Matter is all I'm saying. Ooh, so. call out! Vegans. That's a call out. You racist vegan. Uh, well, <laughs> Just saying. Here at the movie babies, we don't care about anything. <laughs> That's right. We're complete Great. We would prefer our animals to overrun our cities and destroy us. Yeah, I mean, I'm into that. That's my option here. But... So, um, uh, Jess. Yes, Devin. We, here at the Movie Babies, we have something called the Movie Babies Band List. Okay. It's things that we see too much in trailers mm-hmm. that we're sick of it. And Ooh, we, me. We Ooh, pick me. Them. Ooh, pick me. I got one. And I, <laughs> there's a lot of nominations for this trailer. And. Sean, you your hand was up. Yeah, I want to ban cutting cut scenes to military or scientist personnel in computer rooms. I don't want any more of this. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, that's I, I know that there was a lot of other things that could potentially be banned for being cliched, but I'm really tired of half the plot taking place in some type of computer screen control room yeah. where they're like, we got to do this, we got to do this. You're not doing anything. You're just bleep, blop, blooping on computers. It's not compelling to look at. Yeah. It's really irritating. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Okay, so... I agree. What's this? I'm just going to make a list. I'm typing up a list now. Okay. So that's the one. <laughs> the line, let's go save the world. I was going to say that. Okay, Yeah, yes. that was going to be mine. That's good. They almost, I couldn't tell if they were doing it tongue-in-cheek. Like the rock's delivery of it? No, yeah, no, I don't think so because as a lot of his uh, corny jokes that they've shown that trailer. I mean, that's not a joke, I guess. I think they were genuine, but I'm pretty sure he's said that before. 
Oh, really? That's like a catch. That's like, like a rock I feel. Like, I mean, yeah, a lot of his movies are about saving the world. He's know. like, can you smell the rock is cooking? <laughs> can you smell the rock is cooking? I'm going to lay the smack down and let's go save, save the, the world. world. I mean, they might as well work it into all of his movies at this point. But. Okay, so that's another one. Okay. Crashing Airplanes. Yeah. The amount of movies and trailers we have seen that take place in an airplane, mm-hmm. you know it's going to crash. Mm-hmm. And I think we said it on this episode. What's the Tom Cruise one? The Mummy. The Mummy. You can't beat it after The Mummy. The Tom Cruise <laughs> oh, does yeah, the most ridiculous yeah. like yelling reaction to a plane being crashed that it basically broke it. Yeah. I mean, that was fine with banning it after... Bane crashed this plane. Crashed the plane? Uh, there's Yoda crashing the plane. <laughs> she shows up. Everything's a Star Wars sequel now. Or a sto- Star Wars story. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. People crashing planes. Yeah, I agree. falling out of crashing planes. Okay, yeah. well, is there any other nominations? I mean, maybe The Rock at this point. Woof. <laughs> No, <laughs> so give me I, a very yeah. stern look. Yeah. Careful. Well, the things that you guys just named are things that don't make me want to see a movie. But when I see Dwayne, I still want to go see it. What's going on, Dwayne? He yeah. Hasn't, he hasn't done us not. Which yet. is surprising with the amount of films he does. You think he doesn't do a lot? I do think he needs to mix it up after this year of obviously all these movies that are like this. Would, I think he needs to change. It would be nice if he retired the gag of the like, oh yeah, I know I'm big and strong. Like the scene in yeah. here yeah. where he chokes the guy out. She's like, muscle. you don't have to do that. Yeah. It's like I think he's done that joke pretty much. Yeah, every he has. Movie. It's always about his body, which is you know whatever he works hard for that body. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's like we can see it without it being like pointed out yeah. to us. Yeah, we don't need yeah. to draw a circle around. No, a I agree like, with that for sure. All right, well before we go too off task here. <laughs> It's talking about Dwayne's muscles off task. <laughs> yeah. I thought that's why you invited that's me why here. You're here. Came all the way from Seattle <laughs> talking about those muscles. I drove in traffic for this. <laughs> well, okay. Well, let's take a moment of silence where we all just think about Dwayne's muscles. Okay. okay. Here we go. Mm, I'm gonna need a minute, guys. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom. Real quick. Okay. Well, now we gotta start over because you interrupted it. All right. <laughs> And the muscle we were thinking about was the, the penis. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh. what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. I say I'm going to nominate. I'm going to go over the nominations again, and then maybe we just pick one. Vote one. Let's do Let's vote one. one. Right. Okay. So the nominations are computer screen, military, uh, meeting room okay. scenes. Okay. Nomination two, let's go save the world. Mm-hmm. Nomination three, any sort of crashing the airplane scene. Celebrity guest Jess. Um, well, that's a um, yeah. twister. I think I'm going to go with the military one because okay. that is always really boring to me. It's bad. Yeah. Like think of like Geostorm and like Pacific Rim and like yeah. all yeah. these things where it's like cutting just a room of people just go, let me push this button. Let me talk into a microphone. Yeah. Like uh, Hurricane Heist had one the other night. It's the least dramat- visually dramatically compelling thing you can yeah. do. In the yeah, it doesn't. Okay, that's a strong case. I'm going to go, my nomination is crashing the airplanes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I can't see that scene anymore. It's no longer effective. Okay. So, Sean, I think maybe you get the deciding vote here. Do you, want, you don't want to ban them both? I feel like everyone's on the same page about both. You want to ban them both? Yeah, I agree. Only Triple X have we banned two things in a oh, movie, I but mean, well, if anyone's going to, Vin Diesel and The Rock teaming up. That's true. War Room cutscenes are officially banned. <laughs> Bye-bye. That's good. You did like kind of like a Hulk Hogan kind of hand gesture. I thought you were going to hit me. <laughs> I was like... Well, he gets pretty excited. <laughs> Back up, because we're not done. <laughs> Crashing airplanes. Yeah. Is that a good way to title that one? I mean, it's pretty clear. Yeah. That means like no like Sully movies and things like that where they're just like legitimately like oh yeah about, about nine eleven and crash. stuff. I'm okay nine, with that. Nine eleven movies. Okay. We don't need any more. Look, I'm we not gonna forget. Any, I'm not gonna forget. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we didn't need nine eleven movies when they came out. We That's don't true. need them now. <laughs> it's right. still too soon, in my opinion. <laughs> so, <laughs> Crashing airplanes, bam! <laughs> You're gone. Uh, bye bye. 
Whew, it feels oh, good to be in. Yeah, I, this is a productive conversation. Well, yeah. with that said, let's get to the rating of these trailers. Wait, can I say one more thing about Please the trailer? Um, so his sign language, I don't think he's yes. really using real sign. No, because that... it's okay. Is not that it does it, that. This does not mean. It's okay, okay, we're on the same page here <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I was. This isn't a thing. <laughs> This Dwayne. is what you do at baseball games, right? Yeah, this is this not is an actual not, sign. That's not what it's All okay. All his signs was just him doing the rock symbol <laughs> in rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> like, did someone prank him? Yeah, like, I don't like, you know, because if you're going to, if you're going to represent, you know, sign language and like, the, obviously this isn't about the deaf community, but like, I think you should be respectful enough to do an actual sign. Yeah. Like, what the hell was that? Oh, we just had Shape of the Water where they showed yeah. a protagonist doing sign language mm-hmm. and in a pretty respectful yeah, that way. Seems real. And now we have The Rock <laughs> who can't even take the time to learn to sign okay. I was going to say okay. It's like, well, that's not one where people that don't know sign language are going to see it and go, oh, they're, they're going to be like, isn't like this? Everybody knows. Or, you yeah, know, okay. even that, if you're going to be like, whatever. That's, it's like the, the you yeah, know, everybody, that yeah, thing. Not, yeah. 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 Uh, I really hope the like ASL person on on the set was pranking him. Yeah, like, maybe. Oh yeah, cheeseburger. That's this. Yeah. Um, karate chop your hand, <laughs> and uh, uh, you need to tell someone to jump out of a crashing plane. That's yeah. also a karate yeah. chop of the hand. It's just oh. not. Hey, you know, brother, <laughs> sign language is really easy. That was my rock impression. <laughs> Pretty good rock. Uh, but um, yeah, to be fair to the annoying. film, the president cannot get. Remember the Obama thing where they had like the fake interpreter mm-hmm. doing fake signs for the president? Why did they do that? I don't remember that. You guys don't remember this? It's happened multiple times in the last couple of years where fake interpreters are getting hired for very big events. The biggest being it was the funeral of the one of the black leaders, Man, what can't Mandela. Sean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mandela. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so they had an interpreter who was on stage the entire time, like feet away from like just where you and I are sitting from Obama to the interpreter, did not know signs. Was just making them up the why, entire time. Was it a troll they... kind of thing? He yeah, got hired multiple times as well. Was there anybody that spoke sign language in the room I that said like, think... you're not saying anything? <laughs> My understanding is no one actually knows sign language. And so we're all just <laughs> guessing. Because if really? you... Cause, yeah. cause here's the thing. You would have to speak out about it, right? Mm-hmm. Guess what? That's a problem. Uh, that that's what Twitter's so, for. Yeah, yeah uh, I was going to say. I don't remember saying that. Yeah, that's, that's not a story that I heard. But no. I'm wondering how it got away with multiple times and what the intention was. To like disrupt Curious. or to be, like make fun or to be like... Yeah, I wonder if weird. I can get away with this. At Nelson Mandela's funeral, you know, it feels especially disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. What's, the, what's the joy of this joke? Yeah, I don't get that. I wanted to be a sign language interpreter when I was in high school because I took a couple of sign language classes. Me too. Look at that. But I never, I didn't pursue that dream. Um, do you guys want to do the rest of the show in? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here, here's, here's a couple. <laughs> okay, it's the same one. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> well, hopefully that he doesn't use very much sign language in the movie because that will really irritate me. Or at least not terribly inaccurate. Sign yeah, language. maybe you could just try harder, Dwayne. Again, the film Congo did a better job. This yeah. only makes me want to see Congo again. Congo really yeah, set Congo. the Yeah, Congo. Congo's a good movie. All right. Well, Jess, do you remember how we rate trailers? Um, can you refresh my memory? Yeah, totally. Um, the system is as stupid as you could make one. Okay. If you Wait, are... Let me sign it as you... <laughs> okay, explain it. You <laughs> gobbledygook sign what I'm gobbledygook okay. saying. Okay, great. If you are thrilled to go see this movie based on the trailer, you're going to say, uh, like a lot. So you cool my screen. Like a lot. If you need more information, perhaps a third trailer that spells out even more of these terrible tropes that should be brand- banned from all movie trailers, yeah. you're gonna say In Space with Zombie. In Space? In Space with Zombie. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm, I hope you can hear all that in your microphone. And <laughs> third, if this looks atrocious to you and you want nothing to do with it because it's horribly offensive to the ASL community and mm-hmm. the, the giant ape community. Yeah, uh, especially them. Then you're going to say, I love robots. I love robots. Three options. Okay. B, 
Based on these two trailers we watched, how do you feel about Rampage? I love robots. Yeah, really? I hated it. That yeah, bad. I really don't think I'll actually even see this one. What? I'm sorry, Dwayne. It might be the first Dwayne wow. in the movie theater movie I don't go see. Okay. Rampage? You just done fucked up. Wow. It's too corny, and I don't care about the plot, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. What could this film have in the full-length version to redeem itself in your eyes? I don't mean to repeat myself, but if like they were taking down the police, I'd go see it. Okay, okay, cool. I'm glad we're on the same page about that. Me. You and I can be friends. I'd go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'm in the same boat. Uh, I'm also going to rate this as low as you can go. I had a childhood crush on this game. I liked <laughs> its wantonness, and this is just too heartfelt, and it's a waste of the rock and a waste mm -hmm. of the idea, if it was even a halfway passable idea in the first place. So I'm going to say, I love robots. Dwayne, rock buddy, have some bad news. You're jobbing out this trailer. <laughs> oh, no. I Did love robots. Probably? Nothing enjoyable about this trailer. The action looks pretty bland. Mm -hmm. The I, I like video games. Nothing is reaching me there. I don't like the mechanic of how they're turning these creatures into the monsters. Yeah. I, I do, as I recall, that is the little cinema at the beginning of the game, though, is that they... They do take mutagen. It's not aliens. Yes. Or well, one of the mm. facts I so one of the facts I learned about the game was all of them were like humans turned into these animals, yes. kind of like a bebop and rocksteady situation. Very much like your classic bebop and rocksteady. Yeah. Situation. And so um, the lizard was turned into did the same thing, but in this one, it's portrayed apparently that it was just a giant lizard the entire time. Well, not a. It was like a crocodile that turned giant. Yeah. Not a person that turned into a crocodile yeah. that turned well, giant. None of these creatures are people turning into no, animals. That's a correct? misstep, in my opinion. I agree with that. You, you got to Jekyll and hide this. Yeah. That would at least make it more interesting because I think we'd get it less confused with the Planet of the Apes yeah. and the King Kong. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. If the rock turned into the ape. Or the yeah. wolf or something, if we want to keep the race yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, neutralized here. I think I'm a little more interested. I don't know why. <laughs> because it's more true to the source material. Yeah, I, I would think that was silly, but I, would, I might be more inclined to see it if it was a little more, more interesting. Or at the very least, in terms of like meeting the source material, this is a B movie. Oh, big time. Embrace mm. it. Embrace it. Don't try to like make it so serious and heartwarming. Like... That can happen in a B movie, but let it happen organically. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't I force agree. it. Well, oh. Sorry, Rampage Dwayne. is more like. Nope, I always do that. <laughs> thinking something will just come. I, I just hope that Dwayne doesn't listen to this podcast. Yeah, Dwayne, skip this review. Mm -hmm. Go to the next review we'll do of you, and I, maybe it will get better. Dwayne, I saw Baywatch twice, but I'm not going to see Rampage once. <laughs> So, yeah, you made up for it. <laughs> I can't believe you saw me watch it. I can't either. I waste the money. It was like $30. Oh, God. <laughs> and that was Rampage. I have some questions for you, Professor. This is a surprise. There's a rumor that Newt Scamander is headed to Paris. I know he's working under your orders. What do you have to say for yourself, Dumbledore? If you'd ever had the pleasure to teach him, you'd know Newt is not a great follower of orders. Intro battle. I'm at a loss, guys. Oh, Avengers? <laughs> Avengers? They definitely play the Avengers theme at the end of this trailer. Okay, for the record, the Harry Potter movies came out before the Avenger movies, and that was their song first. That's <laughs> true. I believe it. So the and Avengers can keep it. <laughs> who is the Avengers? Who are the Avengers of the Harry Potter world? I don't know enough about the Avengers to say. Dumbledore's army? Is that the same thing? I guess so, right? They're good guys. You're looking at me like I know a goddamn thing about this universe. They're good guys that the Avengers are good guys, right? Yes. Yeah. Dumbledore's well, army, then. That's the equivalent. Yeah, but I guess, like... 
technically Captain America right now is like a enemy oh, he, of the has country. He go, has he gone rogue? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, there's some of that in Harry Potter, too. <sighs> okay. You don't know if Snape's <sighs> evil, you know? So, this is not the first one of these. This is the second of five. Of five? Yeah. Oh, tell me again, hold on, I misheard you. They have five of these planes? I didn't know that either. So when the first one came out last fall, and I was very reluctant to see it, I got forced into it. I was like, okay, that was enjoyable, but then I heard there were going to be five, and I was like, I don't know if I can do it. Like, that's just a lot. Okay, Jess, so oh. not only are you our resident rock expert, uh. you also then are our magic expert. Oh, that's nice. You are yeah. our Harry Potter expert. You know these books and these films? I do. And 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 to just catch me up, okay. Harry Potter is a series of books that originated this universe. Yeah, there are seven of them. There are seven of them. Okay, Whew, well, I'm doing pretty nice. good so far. This is a tangential storyline, though it takes place in the same universe. Yeah, Jude Law is grown up Harry Potter. No, okay. Jude Law. Is, <laughs> so this is this predates Harry Potter's world. Okay, so we're Jude, in prequel zone. So Jude Law is Dumbledore. Which is what? He is the greatest living wizard in Harry Potter's time. He's and the headmaster he, of the school. Most importantly, is gay. <laughs> okay, yeah. That came out after the stories. But um what, like in the tablet? <laughs> yeah, well JK well, we can get into that. We can talk about Jacob Rowling in a minute. But yeah, so these stories take place way before Harry Potter's even born. So Dumbledore is like in his, I guess, early forties, and in Harry Potter, he's like you know, 150 or something. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, what's his name? Abracadabra man. Uh, Albus Dumbledore? No. Uh, uh, Johnny Depp? Nope, nope. Uh, actual mythical Merv- character. Merlin? Merlin? Merlin. He's the Merlin of this universe? Yeah. Okay. Although Merlin exists in Harry Potter too, right? They mention him once when he's looking at the frog, the trading cards for the first time. And okay, I'm yeah. currently listening to the Harry Potter audiobook, so some of the stuff is very fresh on my mind. So I know a lot about Harry Merlin Potter. Merlin is basically like the Stanley cameo. They like, he <laughs> yeah. pops in for a second and he's like, oh, Abracadabra, <laughs> Yeah, okay. exactly. Abracadabra yeah. is his Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and yeah. tall, lanky, fancy pants boy. Uh, Newt Scamander. Newt. Yep, Newt. Uh, Newt Salamander. Newt Sc- uh, Scamander. He's a student. <laughs> he is a student. Or he's an agent, or he's some type of like. I can't remember if he's guy. in. I think he's already out of school. So the first Fantastic Beast movie that came out last year is all about Newt Scamander, mm-hmm. who's got like a affinity for creatures. Um, he like has a bunch of them. He's kind of like a bumbling guy, so these creatures are like spilling out in the real world all over the place. Mm-hmm. Just correct me if I'm wrong. In the original yeah. Harry Potter books, Newt and his fantastical beast yes. is like a book that they kind of like reference, but you it's never... It's mentioned once in the first... It's on Harry's first course load okay. that he has to pick up. So on his on his book list, when he first finds out he's a wizard, it's like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. Okay, okay. and is that yeah. a meta joke? Is this movie that book, or is this... This movie is that book, yeah. But, but it's way a later. non-fiction book in the Harry Potter world. Right. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, I can yeah. get behind that. Yeah, yes. so they study it in school in Harry Potter, but these characters are those people. Okay. And these are the events of the that yeah. mm-hmm. account. Okay. And, as far, and as far as books go in the real world... There isn't a book series, Fantastic Beasts. There is... Hold the fucking phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is just a movie series? Yeah. So I think... So after... In the height of the Harry Potter craze, like, I think it was even before the very last book came out, because that was, mm-hmm. like, a really long wait, and people are kind of like, what are you doing, JK? Rowling, who wrote him. <laughs> um, she put out a couple, like, here's a dumb, like, 16-page Quidditch book, and then I, there's a there's a Creatures one Mm -hmm, and i don't remember if there's a fantastic beast one or not but even if there is it's not even like a chapter book it's just like a cute little book like a collector's item for harry potter dorks oh like me who had all this but i didn't read any of them (laughs) because i don't care to read more about quidditch that was already like the least you just gotta collect them all yeah yeah so it's not a book series this is all for the screen only and who is taking it upon themselves to create this mythological universe it's jk rowling like i I don't know if she fully writes the screenplay or if somebody else does. So she's credited as the main writer for yeah, these films. Yeah, because she I knew that she was like very involved. Which is not. interesting because in the movies mm-hmm. she did not adapt those No, she did not. Uh Harry Potter movies. Right. So she's has she is, full reins on the story has, of these fantastic yeah, movies. And she has movies. say in the casting, which obviously we'll talk about later, and then um 
The oh. director, David Yates, mm-hmm. I believe he did the last one too. He directed Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Yeah, he or did the, the he did Order of the Phoenix, Half Blood Prince, and the two Deathly Horror. Okay, so he did the films. most of the original Harry Potter run. Apologies to anybody who's listening who's like, Jesus Christ, how did you miss out on this? <laughs> no, it's confusing. I mean, it. Well, uh, when I when they first announced these movies coming out too, I got them mixed up with that um, the Curse of the Forgiving Child or whatever that is. And that's a play, not that's by a, Rowling. Not by her. It came out. It's a book. People read it. Um, the guy I was dating at the time was he's and I trust him. He's like a big Harry Potter dork, and I trust his opinion. He said it was really good, and you got to read it, but I never have. Um, but so it's confusing because J.K. Rowling keeps adding on to this universe. Yeah. Mostly it's via like tweets, and so it's hard to keep track. <laughs> She's like, wait, 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 I got an idea. Yeah. I got an idea. Okay, well, it's that's four where, in the like, morning. The Dumbledore uh... thing came from. Yeah, it's like Dumbledore is gay, and like there's a running joke on Twitter now that she's like closing her eyes and turning on a dartboard and being like, oh, dog, the house elf is trans. You know, it's just kind of uh, like she okay. just brings up like random shit now. So since you know, among your other massive strengths uh, <laughs> as a re- our resident expert on many things, your Twitter game is as strong as I've ever met someone who have. Thank you, and I'm sorry. No, that's <laughs> yeah. great. But, so, I want you to tell me about J.K. Rowling as you know her through Twitter. Like, okay. what is her real yeah. life? She's kind of a controversial character. As far she as I is. Yeah, it's too bad. It's like a, it's like a never meet your heroes thing, but Twitter like made that accessible for everybody. Mm-hmm. They, Twitter ruined her. Yeah, life. they wait, did. Wait, but she's not like these people who are like, oh, I'm a sex offender or anything no, like that, No, I mean, she's that, never right? touched anybody inappropriately, but she's still kind of sucks. Not even with magic? <laughs> <laughs> she touched people's hearts. And that she we can does, never forgive And her. now she just makes everybody really mad. Okay, so, I didn't realize that there was like... Yeah. I knew she's active on Twitter, but I thought Super she active. was more, I guess, progressive on Twitter, and that's why pe- she was getting backlash. Well, there's multiple things. So she does. She's really active on Twitter. Um, she's wildly famous, obviously, and she mm-hmm. responds to fans. So not every famous person on Twitter will respond to their fans, but she does, and that gets people in a lot of trouble. Yeah, <laughs> Dwayne. Um, she blocks people who don't agree with her. She gets called out on a lot of stuff. So a lot of people call that on like um, appropriating a lot of like Native American themes um, in the original Harry Potter series, and like she'll just block those people instead mm. of like having a conversation about it. And you know she's a rich blonde white lady, so like she should be having these conversations. Yeah. So that's one reason people are frustrated with her. And then okay. the other thing is she keeps just like announcing stuff on Twitter about these characters that we all love and should have stopped when the book stopped, but then she keeps adding on, and so then it makes you feel weird. Not that Dumbledore being gay, I think that came out, like, within the year of the last book coming out, but she adds stuff now where I'm like, just stop talking about the characters that are done, you know? Like, it's over for these guys. Like, just leave it. I see. Yeah, there is kind of... um, Some retconning going on. Yeah, and there's that Mm -hmm. kind of, like, debate on, like, with authors, like, in any art, right. I guess, of how much say does the author has once yeah. the printed material is right. done? Right. Like, can they go back and be like, oh, this is what was happening, or this is what I meant? Yeah. Or is it left to the audience, the reader, well, this is how I imagined it. I want that to be my reality. And right. now you're contradicting that with, like, your Twitter tweets. Yeah, well, it's annoying, too, right, because the books ended such a long time ago. They meant mm-hmm. so much to so many people, including myself. And then even adding on, and this is true for, I think, everything right now. It's the same with Star Wars stuff, right, where people are like, I don't want to count that, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And that's the same thing with Harry Potter. Like, so, Jess, you're saying she's the George Lucas of I mean, Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and then um, her main thing right now is that she has gone hard on, like, defending Johnny Depp, which okay. is just that's yeah. where I came. So, I wanted to. That's start where most with people's final straw was also, with J.K. Rowling. We're deep in this okay. segment already. Okay. Have not talked about the trailer, but no. go oh, on. Oh, sorry. The teaser yeah. trailer. <laughs> yeah. What? We, and 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 half of the trailer. It, P.S. is a montage that's yeah. just like. For people like me who don't know who those characters are, you're seeing these faces, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. And you guys are like, oh, fuck, that's Pablo the Wizard Man! And like, <laughs> that's Diggledy Piggledy <laughs> Jones! And character. like, yeah. I don't know who the fuck these people are. Like, yeah. it, it wouldn't be a beneficial conversation for us to have. <laughs> so, so we've discussed many times our disdain for Johnny Depp. Yes. Yeah, he sucks. Not only is he just becoming this aged piece of crap of, like, bad roles, and he's just doing all this, like all these children's movies and not really ever acting anymore, like having to lift an actual acting chop. But he's a beater and a bad guy. Yeah. 
And apparently he's one of the dudes who's getting away with it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really dropping the axe on him in a yep. time where most people are not being able to get away with it. She doubled down. And w did she say things beyond, like, he's just going to be in the movies? Or did she talk about the actual, like, assault incidences yeah, and Yeah, she did. So she tweeted, she linked to her website when she finally, because she, she, like, loudly did not say anything for a few months. And then people finally were like, you have to say something. But she signed it, like, rock style? Or? <laughs> she... <laughs> She just kept karate chopping her open palm. Um, she said so. She said that she and David Yates had they considered the possibility of recasting, added on that blah blah blah. Harry Potter and the community is one of the greatest joys of my life for me personally. I can't speak openly about this at all times. It's been frustrating. She like acknowledges that people are mad. However, the agreements that have been put in place to protect the privacy of two people, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, both of whom have expressed a desire to get on with their lives, must be respected. So she's basically using like. Amber Heard said she's moving on, so, like, this is fine. Y'all need to move on. Yeah. Um, and then she said, um, however, conscience is governed by committee within the fictional world and outside it. We all have to do what we believe to be the right thing. That's what made me the most mad because I'm like, that's a weird thing to say. It's not the right. She knows it's not the right thing. It's, it's yeah, weird. Do, it's that's well, not, then people, that's it, not what happened in that Spike Lee film. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Well, and then she created this whole universe and world and all of the Harry Potter fans really like used to look to J.K. Rowling and the characters that she created as great examples of feminism, of standing up for what's right, of like A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And well, then even, casting Johnny Depp is like, yeah. how did, it's like negates what you created yeah. and what we all Which believe. It is funny too because, Sean, have you seen the first Fantastic Beast oh, movie? Hell no. I okay. <laughs> I saw that yeah. film. And Johnny Depp is the worst thing in it. And he's, like, in, it. he's in it briefly. Like a minute at the end. His costuming is strange, yeah, to say is. the least. I mean, I've, if, I feel like he's pretty much, get he's like Prince. He's got free reign of like what he's going to wear in a movie. Yeah. yeah. He's had that for a long time Yeah, now. I agree. Like, his weird nose appliance in that Kevin Smith movie and stuff mm -hmm. when he played like the inspector. Like, yeah. he's just on his own. Like, I'll dress myself. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But he stands yeah. out in that movie. Motherfucker shouldn't be able to dress himself in real life. Have <laughs> yeah. you seen pictures of him like wandering around Los Angeles? He yeah. looks like Marilyn Manson got like just super big. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, he took the rampage. Music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. But anyways, yeah. he. He's the worst part of that movie. He sticks out like a th sore thumb. Mm -hmm. And here is like a blessing that's come to you. It's it's a it's a it's a bread plate. It's a bread <laughs> it's bread on your plate. What's that expression? Bird in the bush? Is that what it is? Bird what are you trying to say? I no, like, like bread on my plate. <laughs> I can get or it. Or like something it. is like given to it's you. It's a Taco Bell platter after midnight. <laughs> As they say in the game, <laughs> it's like given to you yeah. on a silver platter. Okay, oh, sure. Now we're going. Served on a silver platter. It's a bread served on the yeah. silver platter. Not a bread. Platter. No bread. No, okay. silver, just the silver platter. Yeah. It's like the fancy bread, though. Not not like white bread. Not like Olive Garden bread. Like <laughs> yeah. Breadsticks. Yeah. <laughs> like little cheesers, breadsticks okay. on a plate, dipping sauce included. You get. <laughs> You have the perfect excuse to get rid of the worst part yeah. of your movie. Oh, yeah. Recast the, re the reaction happened. Recast he didn't do anything him. significant yet. You can flip it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, yeah, and that's what everybody said. This came out, the casting news and, and every all this conversation came out right around when um, they replaced all of Kevin Spacey's parts oh in that movie, in that yeah. movie right, right, right. like three weeks before it came out so everyone was like we know you guys can do it like we yeah. know this can be done yeah. like why are Dude. you doing and she was like no i'm gonna this is what i'm gonna stand for for some reason and even if johnny depp wasn't a bad actor and a wife beater i think personally they shouldn't have gone with somebody so recognizable and huge and not british to play this Role. Okay, and and so, okay, dip me back into the world of yeah. the of the lore. Who is this character that he's playing? So he plays Grindelwald, who we only know a little bit about, but w the most that we hear about him is in the last Harry Potter book. And he's he... like the new Voldemort. Well, no, well, sorry, the he who must not be. <laughs> he'd be the he'd be pre Voldemort. Okay, yeah, yeah. But also, he he and Dumbledore. All we know is that they had an extremely close friendship. They didn't see eye to eye eventually, and they had, like, what is known as, like, the greatest wizard battle of all time. 
So I think that's what these movies are going to lead up to that battle between Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Um, wasn't there like hints that they had a relationship? Well, that yeah, when she came out later and said Dumbledore was gay, it was kind of implied that like their close friendship might have like so towed that line. She really is the new George Lucas because all of these new Star Wars story movies yeah. are basically. Remember the line in Empire Strikes Back where yeah. like. Obi Wan says this. This movie's all about that. Right. And so now yeah. we have like. Yes. Yeah, remember it's very similar. that yeah. one line in Harry Potter three where we mentioned the greatest wizard, wizard battle ever. Of all time. Yeah. It was actually totally. the greatest wizard sixty nine blow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's who he is, and, and he so he is supposed to be like a the dark side to Dumbledore's good. Okay. Dumbledore. And apparently these films. It's Star Wars. It's just Star Wars. These <laughs> yeah. like how many, these five films. Are all leading up to this battle. Yeah, I think that's gonna where see we're the going. Wald, Which brings Dumbledore me to battle. the biggest problem of these films. If they wanted to call them like Harry Catch Potter it. or the high school years, or mm. I don't know, <laughs> anything that's like more about the general world politics and like this wizard yeah. battle, like I'd be okay with. Yeah. This is called Fantastic Beasts. So yeah. when I went to go see this movie, what I wanted was Pokemon. Yeah, I wanted a dude. All about the I wanted yeah. Doctor Who, which he looks like, to like go around London catching Pokemon yeah. in his briefcase. Yeah, and like I agree. the fun yeah. of this him meeting these wacky fantastic beasts. Yeah. There's none of that. They do have, they have that one scene in the first movie where he, where they he takes the people back to his cottage or whatever. The yeah, hell. it's Yeah. There's a little bit of it in the first film. (laughs) Nothing that I was in love with. No, me either. And the projection of these films is not about the beast. So why are we calling it Fantastic Beasts? Well, I knew who is played by Eddie Redmayne. He's supposed to be in it less and less as the movies go on. I think Depp and Jude Law have bigger parts. That seems like a bad idea. So it's like Eddie Redmayne's... The star, and then like he's gonna he's be what like gets, not even gets the kids into the theater, and then yeah. the kids are like, "Where's our young hot yeah. guy?" Honestly, oh, it's like, no, this is about Johnny Depp fighting also, Dumbledore. Um, can we talk about Jude Law's as Dumbledore? Yeah, let's. Because I like Jude Law in some things, but he does not have. <laughs> I can't think of them right now. <laughs> I like but Jude Law in phone booths. <laughs> I like Jude Law in. Uh, <laughs> Out of space. Wasn't but... he in that picture movie where he's like taking pictures of stuff? Road to Perdition. He was in Road to Perdition? He's he the cameraman. That's Tom Hanks. No, he's like the cameraman. I don't think he's in he Road was, to Perdition. He was, the, he was the director of photography on Road to Perdition? <laughs> Incorrect. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Can I hope guy. your favorite Jude Law movie is a movie he's not in. <laughs> That's really one good. hour photo with Robin Williams. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was thinking of too. He's in movies. He's in Maybe movies. not real to perdition, <laughs> but he's in movies like it. Okay. And he's okay. But he's not charismatic. He's not overly charismatic in a way that I picture Dumbledore to be. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Well, I think he's okay. I'm willing to see how he does. Who played Dumbledore in the old movies? Well, one, the first actor died. Richard Harris died after the first two movies, okay. which is too bad because I preferred him. And then Michael Gambon. Okay. Also known as the angry Dumbledore. Okay. He's a little bit more vibrant. So the first one was like a really old guy and, and then he died. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. I, so. I mean, I, I'm not against uh, the casting of Jude Law for young Dumbledore. The only thing that's funny is that he was like young Pope and then young Dumbledore. And it's like, what are you trying to prove, Jude? <laughs> I'm young. <laughs> like, chill out. I'm young. Um, but I mean, like, I, I, I also think the same thing about, I think he's a big name and recognizable face. And uh, mm-hmm. that's a little distracting. Because you're not going to go, oh, that's Dumbledore. You're going to go, that's Jude Law. But you I know? guess if he's you really have five films you're building on, you yeah. have to have some recognizable names. You all think they're going to get even to three, though? I'm curious about what it, how it'll do because a lot of people won't see it because of Johnny Depp. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like that's the one element of the double down on casting him thing that doesn't seem to make sense. Like you're essentially looking at your audience, who is your income, yeah, and going, oh, they don't want this. Mm-hmm. I probably shouldn't do this. Right, like totally. if that's going to screw up your opening weekend, yeah. Bad call, Ripley. Like, don't yeah, do it. I agree. Well, yeah, and a lot of people who are really big Harry Potter fans, I know, either didn't see the first Fantastic Beasts or really didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think that making the casting choice burned. like this was a good 
This is I probably earth. won't see this in the theater. That's what's strange about these when they do like announce like we're doing five films before like one has come out. Yeah. Or like one has come out and it didn't do well. Yeah. Like the same thing that happened with the dark you universal bring that up one more goddamn time. <laughs> studio <laughs> movie. Or okay, like the yeah. same thing that happened to the um Lion and the Witch films. Oh yeah, that's kind of like yeah. yeah, where they yeah. were going to do all those movies, and then guess what? They didn't because they were bad. Same thing with Lemony Snicket. Was that what you're talking about? Yeah, Lemony when Snicket too. That? Oh no. Oh, I mean the Lemony Snicket and Lion and the Witch are different movies. I books. I know that, but they only did one, and I actually thought it was okay. But obviously, people just probably didn't go see it or something. Oh yeah. The Golden Compass is that the same as Lion? Well, that's Witch? different. Oh. That's like the <laughs> that's like the I think polar. Opposite oh, and of like Bridge uh, to Terabithia and all those things that just didn't get legs. Yeah, well, no and, yeah. and Lion and the Witch has like the analogy to like God and Christian. Yeah, yeah they didn't like Christian, Christian shit. And Those like, are Christian books, yeah, yeah. Gold, Golden Compass, I think, is more like an atheist, Not. like more uh, Golden agnostic. Golden Compass is the same story but without God. <laughs> yeah, there, it's, it's for heathen. And a giant <laughs> uh, tiger, I think. I don't know what that movie was about. <laughs> yeah, I don't either, obviously. I think it was a polar bear. Um, oh, yeah, it was. Do you guys know who that little Groot character is in this trailer? There's like a little... Yeah, he's got a little pal. He's in the first movie, too. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's one of Newt's creature friends. I think his name is I Am Groot. He's always running around. Newt's like falling, and he's kind of like a bumbly character, so he's always like trying to pick up his creatures. And What is Newt trying to accomplish in this movie? Why is he like <sighs> spying around London, or what's he sent to do? Yes, Dumbledore in this trailer. We did it. We brought it back. <laughs> in this trailer, Dumbledore is being questioned. They say, I have some questions for you, Professor. Newt Salamander, you have hired him. Why? Mm -hmm. And the answer <laughs> is... is... Oh, I'm Dumbledore now. When he was a student, he didn't listen very well either. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that happens at the end of the first movie that I don't remember, but it kind of opens the door to, like... So new in the first one is, like, oh, my creatures are getting everywhere, and, like, the muggles... They don't call them muggles... Cause, oh, because it takes place in America. I forgot about that. That's uh, a big muggles thing. have a different name in America. They call them non-magi or something. That's dumb. It's something really dumb. They um, call them the N-word? That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, so Newt's, like, in America, and, like, all these non-magic folk are, like, you know, seeing his... Um, Creatures everywhere. Mm -hmm. He gets in trouble for that because you're not supposed to show like your magic, magic to. You can't, can't whip out to, your creatures in public. Yeah, and, but then so like he goes, he's like on trial and stuff, and I don't remember like what the. Cause that's what. Cause that's what we want to see. Pokemon. <laughs> I'm a stickler yeah. for monsters. I love them We're when they a courtroom drama when they are done right. But we don't see yeah. a lot of Fantastic Beasts in this trailer. Or we where see, to find them. We see... Yeah, maybe that is the big reveal. It's like, these movies are just a huge tease. And by film five, we're going to get all the... You're going to get a map of where to find these Yeah, beasts. like, yeah. that's when all the Fantastical yeah. Beasts will come out. Because we saw the twig monster, and we see, like, a seaweed monster that someone's riding. And that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Not enough Fantastic Beasts. Not enough. Me. Yeah, but yeah, so he's on trial or something, and I'm um, he obviously knows Dumbledore because he went to school at Hogwarts. Okay. Which is the school that they go to in Harry Potter. But he's an American. I don't remember why, and he meets these Americans. I don't... It's not a very memorable movie. I don't remember a lot like that it. happens. Yeah. It sounds like they're really kind of making it up as they go. Yeah, well, my... Let me just keep talking about my ex-boyfriend for some reason, but he um, <laughs> he hated the he hated the first Fantastic Beast because he said it reminded him too much of Goblet of Fire. So it's the same thing, but like reworked, which is the fourth Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know what he was talking about, but now like watching this trailer, I can I can see the parallels. It's just like the focus. It's weird. It's like a weird thing to make a plot line of a movie out of, mm -hmm. and then to have it transition into the um, Dumbledore Grindelwald fight. It seems like it has nothing to do with it. It's 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 a fun adventure movie that they're trying to make really dark. Yeah. Which is like yeah. the biggest trend. If it was a standalone, it would have been the, fine. The same problem with Rampage. That's a B movie. Do not try to make it serious. Yeah. This really. Fantastic Beast is the same. I still think if you want to make a dark movie, I still will say the best example is the first 1990s Ninja Turtle movie. 
I love that movie. That movie is funny. It's fun, but it also has some heart. It's a little bit darker than your normal, like, kids fair. Yeah. That's that's my go-to, like, here's, like, a fun family movie with a little bit of meat on it. Yeah. So you think they should have done that for this movie? <laughs> yeah. It would have been so much fun if he was just catching animals and then, you know, there's maybe a little bit of drama. Yeah, I don't really know what the point is to these movies besides that it's just like furthering the Harry Potter universe and making them more money. But I feel that same way. I don't mean to talk about Star Wars because it's not like my thing, but that's how I feel about all the Star Wars movies that come out too. Yeah. Like what's the point of any of them? Would would y'all be interested in a Harry Potter prequel, yes. sequel thing that is a TV series? Oh, interesting. Um, yes. Yeah, I would... Um, my what I always wanted if they ever did a it's like my dreams are coming true but the wrong dreams because what I wanted from JK Rowling <laughs> Your nightmares I really wanted I really, really wanted a prequel that focused on Harry's parents and Sirius and Lupin. Oh yeah. That, those were interesting characters that you grew to love and care about that we don't get to know that much about. Well and if they were gonna do a prequel yeah. and that would that would work really well as TV series. Snape is a big part of that too. Totally. And not to spoil the Harry Potter series book series too much but <laughs> Harry Potter's family are jerks which was surprising like his dad his dad is yeah which was a very surprising yeah. turn he's like a bully yeah yeah and so yeah but that Snape's would be a interesting jerk too a little bit well but I mean like as, he like he tortures now. A child the because cool thing he was about in love having with microphones his mother. is that I can but. whisper into it and <laughs> tell the audience right now that my face I mean, is you remember, you remember just in so book confused six right now. When Dumbledore went down the water slide. That <laughs> so was my fun. favorite. Yeah. No, but yeah, I think that I think a TV show would do well. And there are other characters they could focus on. I don't know why they picked these ones. I would love like a like a Disney channel following the houses like the witch, witches of waverly palace kind of vibe yeah, yeah. Like a fun like yeah cafeteria fun. at the wizard school yeah. that's what the yeah. first harry potter books kind of were they were just like a boarding school adventure and yeah they and turned... it was like and all the you know everything was innocent still yeah and it was just like i'm gonna get more points than you hufflepuff yeah and they were like <laughs> whatever man <laughs> chill out <laughs> Well, yeah. should we rate it? Let's rate this. So everybody guess Jess Thalmer. Um, what do you think of Fantastic Beasts? Not two. The, the Crimes th of Gibbledygunk. Um, and Space of Zombies, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Middle of the road for you. I would I would be more inclined to see it if it weren't Johnny Depp. I think I would just kind of go out of curiosity can, because I like, you know. Can I ask you this? Yes. One, two, two parts. Okay. One, what did you think of the original... Harry Potter franchise mm. and those films, maybe the ones specifically by David Yates. And two, what do you think about this transition of J.K. Rawlings from apparently going from novels to screenwriting? Hmm. Great questions. Um, those are really good questions. I had right? to, I had You're to right. Learn, Thank you. I had to learn um, to separate the Harry Potter movies from the books, mm -hmm. which I think is a good thing to do for all people who read books because you can't, if you go into it going like, it should be exactly like it. That's not, I don't really think that way anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, I think overall they were good. They were well done. Um, everybody has kind of a different, which one is their favorite and mine's way different than most people's. Wait, what's yours? Um, Goblet of Fire is my favorite. Yeah, don't just leave us, you're just going to leave us hanging <laughs> Sorry, there. Goblet, Goblet of Fire is which my one's favorite. That? Which one's that? It's the fourth one. It's the one with the Quidditch World Cup. I think it's the oh, most fun, fun. and yeah, it gets dark fun. at the end, but it's fun. It's just an enjoyable movie. The act, the kids are not good actors at all in the first like oh. four movies. They're horrible. <laughs> and Dan Radcliffe is the worst choice for Harry Potter. I know he was only like nine when they cast him, mm -hmm. but he's just a very bad actor. Right, and we got some child shaming now. <laughs> Sorry, I know. <laughs> he's just bad. <laughs> he's eight years old, couldn't just, fucking whack his way out good. of a paper bag. Which is good because not we just, what's that movie we watched? We just watched a trailer called Book Club mm -hmm. where we this dismantled old people. So it's good uh, that we're giving it back. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah little um, kids kicking them. Yeah, but overall, as a, as a movie series, I think they were enjoyable films. I don't like that they split the last one into two, but they started doing that with everything Hunger Games yeah. and all that crap. But, would you sit down and watch them all again sometime? Yeah, they just added them to HBO, and I thought I would do that, and I have not. But um, And um, J.K. Rawlings as a screenwriter? 
I just don't trust her really anymore. So I think mm. she's a great writer. Obviously, she wrote books that mean the world to me. Do you um, think she's the secret Death Eater? She might have been in Slytherin. I used to think she was in Gryffindor because she's mm. a Leo. Oh, yeah. Let's all say what houses we are. I'm in, I'm in Gryffindor. <laughs> nice. Me too. I took it twice. The first time I was Gryffindor, the second time <laughs> I was Hufflepuff. Okay. Sean, you're a Slytherin. Sean. Like, that's not even like... You can call him Slytherin just because he doesn't care about the story. No, Sean doesn't care about anything. Oh, okay. You guys are really bothering me with Sorry. this. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. Uh, okay, so that's how I feel. I don't trust J.K. Rowling, but I think she's a talented writer, obviously. I just think she's maybe not... I think she's a little bit of a white feminist. She needs to get her shit in check, so... If, if there was a three-way dance of death between J.K. Rowling... Mm. Elizabeth Myers or whatever Twilight lady Stephanie, Myers. Stephanie Myers and the Fifty Shades gal yeah. who, who would come out on top of that Hunger Game. J.K. Rowling is the only one that can write of those three Oh, people. really? Yeah. Okay. She's yeah. a decent writer. She okay. is incredible, but she's just in, she's making bad choices as a, as a human. But right. yeah, for sure. Well, the ratings go thusly. You're... Middle of the road on this, mm -hmm. which kind of surprised me. I thought the Johnny Depp thing would tip you to like I no know. go. I kind of should. I'm not gonna see it in the theater, right. so she's gonna she's gonna um, steal it like she would a car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like oh. I steal cars. <laughs> yes. I'm really good at that. That's not a black joke. That's a <laughs> those movie don't yeah. steal at. Ad jokes. Privacy. It's a privacy joke. It's a privacy right? joke. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go. Unsurprisingly, I love robots. What? Yeah. What? Ranch. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. I don't know what that means, but I'm I'm starting to appreciate <laughs> the disdain that it seems to hold. Means you're a snake man, Sean. Fine, I'll take it. Um, okay. It doesn't seem magical or whimsical or fantastical. Yeah. Yes. Good point. It seems very gray and drab. Yeah. So I had a little like mini fascination recently with on YouTube watching old BBC series of like sci-fi mm. fantasy type things because they do like a, they all have like a lot of folk horror elements that are it's kind of interesting to me. So I've been watching them. And it's amazing that they're all like kids shows, but they're all just like these huffy, puffy old people just mm -hmm. like in libraries going like, oh, the sorcerer's cold says that I need to eat more prunes. And there's like, it couldn't be more, <laughs> less kid friendly. Mm -hmm. It's Sounds not great. fun yeah. at all. And this, this is what it, that seems like. It's just like a dusty old BBC series that's not fun for anyone. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mis, mishandled. What it would take to get me to go wouldn't even necessarily be the Pokemon element either. I think this is just, in general, a not for me. Right. You would need a That's magic fair. spell put on you. Maybe. And I want a magic What's the one that makes you forget things? Is this a Harry Potter Yeah, there's like a question? forget me not... Uh, Ob forget uh, me. Obliviate. Obliviate. I just did it to my brain because I don't want this trailer <laughs> living inside of me anymore giving it a I love robots Sean there you you nailed it there's All no right. yeah. magic whimsy I like the idea of exploring the Harry Potter universe uh -huh. same way as I like the idea of exploring the Star Wars universe there's a lot of cool elements and stories but instead they keep trying to relive that past glory of like building these very serious stories and if you go back to, like, the first Star Wars film, if you go back to the first Harry Potter film, they didn't start serious. Like, the Star it's Wars true. one, yeah. the Star Wars yeah. movie's about them getting a medal. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just, like, a fun, like, Indiana Jones, you're swinging on vines in the spaceship. Yeah. And in Harry Potter, it's just about the boarding school adventure and Harry, like, misbehaving in school. <laughs> and they're trying to, like, they're trying to, like, grow the tone with the demographic a yeah. little bit, but they're yeah. blowing it. Yeah. Because they're starting at the most serious, and we don't have an attachment to these characters. We don't like these characters. I don't like Salmon Boy over here. He needs to go take a <laughs> swim because... <laughs> Would, yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Like, the expansion of the universe thing is usually a good idea on paper. Like, it would be very fun to have, like, the higgledy-piggledy school janitor mm -hmm. be, like, the yeah. main character. It's like, I yeah. gotta clean up after these magician kids. Fun idea yeah. for a show. Yeah. Or, like, 
the the what's the planet in Star Wars where the, it's the bar they always go oh yeah to? the cart- the cantina the cantina if that yeah. was like Cheers if there was like a show where it's like it just takes place at the cantina yeah. and it's like yeah. oh alien norm like that would be yeah, fun that'd be fun I'd watch but that yeah. whatever this is just seems yeah. like too espionagey and it's like not yeah hitting the mark of the magic-y fun yeah I stuff. agree I mean I think yeah you guys have a good point of I don't really know who the audience is is it supposed to be new Harry Potter fans or is it, if it's supposed to appeal to dorks like me who read it when I was 13 and loved it it doesn't work I'm not attached to any of these people <laughs> so do you have a, a pitch for you know what appealed to little Jess that mm-hmm. would take you through the timeline of this stuff and now appeal to elder Jess mm, I mean it's just like as corny as it comes like what it was appealing about Harry Potter is like friendship and loyalty and like Harry you know you see these kids grow up they're 11 when they start school and they're 17 when they they don't really finish school but um what, higgledy piggledy dropouts a little bit they had to go fight Voldemort so I don't think they ever quite graduated <laughs> <laughs> so they had out more important summer. things to do but yeah I mean I guess if it had elements that like match that but th- this doesn't really have that it's like it, it does obviously have good versus evil which is kind of confusing, though, with the Johnny Depp casting. But good versus evil isn't what I liked in Harry Potter. I didn't like Harry Potter versus Voldemort. I liked his stories with his friends. Like, that's what means something to me. Okay, so, so potentially the Sex in the City meets Harry Potter world Perfect. would be better. It's like, we're trying to right. navigate our young adult lives Yeah, here. I love that. Like, Harry, uh, Hermione and, like, Ron's flirtation. And I always like the, like, romance and the friendship story. And, you know, Harry doesn't have parents and he doesn't have family. And then, like, the Weasleys take him in. And, like, that is all super special to me. Mm-hmm. It makes me, like, teary even, like, thinking about it. It's so touching. But this isn't going to have any of that. It's, like, yeah. Newt's friends with animals or creatures <laughs> or whatever. And then it's, like, you know, bad guys fighting. I don't know. I think that would, would get me is if they, if it, like, went into a into like the porn parody universe i think if this was like harry potter mm. just straight up those characters fucking then i would be into it is there a good harry potter porn parody i would imagine there's tons of like uh, fan authored uh shipping oh there's tons on. of harry potter fan fiction yeah, yeah oh, for which sure. of yeah. the erotic variety i would only yeah hope oh yeah there's tons of that okay, for sure good. so yeah. you know JK. Sean, you should see my Patronus. <laughs> You're what? My Patronus. <laughs> Harry Potter fans are loving that okay, joke. What? Not you, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's representational you of... You said on the heels of a porn parody, so I don't really know what you're implying. <laughs> um, like Patronus is like your magic like uh, animal or whatever. Is yours a... Is like a dick? dick? <laughs> Cause like Hermione's is, is an otter and yours is a dick. <laughs> like, oh, I not... broke my microphone. <laughs> no, that's with that said, mm. we should end this segment. Okay, okay. well <laughs> that was Fantastic Beasts, the crimes of against humanity. <laughs> And that's the episode. <laughs> uh, you guys, why are you guys laughing? I nailed that on my oh, first right. take. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for having me. Can yeah, I thanks say for that? coming no. all the way. I hope it felt <laughs> worth your time. I love talking about Dwayne, even okay. w- even with a really bad movie. I always feel bad when we have a guest on, and then it's like, oh, we all hated the trailers. No, that makes it fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like talking Agreed. shit. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you. About that's gorillas, I guess. <laughs> About animals. <laughs> Fuck animals. That's the tagline of this show. We we talk a lot of shit, but mm-hmm. hey, we have fun here. Do you want to tell people how to find us? Considering they're already listening to this, they probably already know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, all the podcast apps. If you are in Bellingham, you can go check out Film is Truth, oh, yeah. our local video store who we're great pals with now. You can find Film is Truth for all your video needs at the public market, Cornwall Avenue. I don't even live here, Devin, come on. Even <laughs> Jess knows it. Even <laughs> Jess knows about Film is Truth, and she doesn't even live here, Sean. Across the Marlis is in Studio Galactica. Yeah. What more do we need to say? But I do want to say, if you listen to this, my new segment I want to introduce is 
we say a film and then you have to go rent it at film is true <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna continue yeah All right. maybe a obscure film that wouldn't regularly get rented and so if it got rented they know it's us we did that oh how it's, obscure it's called what are you gonna do? the segment's called uh the... how about fantastic rentals and where to rent them <laughs> okay good how about how about we pitch it to our celebrity guest name a film that someone should rent you know, the first thing you said when, when I thought of when you said that was sliding doors, but I don't think that's obscure enough. No, that's fine. I, I, probably I, that. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Sliding doors with Gwyneth Paltrow? Perfect. I haven't seen it. That's great. Do you, you, you like this movie? You I do. I like it a lot. this movie? Yeah, I watched it when I was a kid and not since, but I loved it. I should so, watch it again. Is this about doors? or? Yeah, it's like, so she's going to get on the subway train and then um, she doesn't, but you get to see her life if she got on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Full stop. That's the movie. She, she about to, to answer the call to adventure? You get to see what happens if she got on the train and if she did not. So it's like you get to see two parts of her life. The cover's like, she's brunette and blonde because... If she got on the train, she obviously dies her hair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that must be my favorite love- premise <laughs> of a trailer I've ever like my favorite pitch I've ever heard. She go what was it? She goes on a train. She's about to go, she on, a train, go on a train and then she doesn't. <laughs> Sli- slide so, door. You, Sliders. I'm a the bad door. writer. You in conclusion. If you're if you're playing at home, please go to film is truth. <laughs> Take Movie Baby Jess's uh, suggestion, find Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow, walk up to the counter, and <laughs> raise your eyebrows to the clerk while you rent it. Yeah. They'll understand <laughs> what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, And then someone yeah. else has to go to Film is Truth, <laughs> Not about to get the movie, and then don't get it, and walk out the yeah, door. Yeah, your life will change drastically. <laughs> You have to dye your hair blonde before you watch it. Just, do you have anything that you want to promote in the world or uh, in your the own? world? Or if you, like some of our guests, feel embarrassed about being here, you can <laughs> give us like an alias name and we can <laughs> kind of like buzz out your voice. Um, no, I'm not embarrassed. You can follow me on Twitter, I guess. I retweet kids of pictures of foster kids who need to be adopted. That's what I do for my real work now. Oh, that's your real job. Okay. I was like, that's <laughs> just a hobby. Weird. That's what I do. I do. And then every once in a while when I write, I'll retweet it. So. Well, I always say this right now. Any listener of this show should not adopt children. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not true. I'm sure there are some potentially good foster parents out there. Well, I believe that. Our state needs more of them. I'm just saying I, 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 that's more of a dig at our listening audience i probably should not do that i know some people that listen to your podcast and they're great people (laughs) really yeah but could they parent (laughs) well let's broker a deal off off episode i'll have devin purchase several of these foster children from you yeah Uh, get some of these kids off your hands let's introduce our new new segment it's called (laughs) adopt a child where our celebrity guest tells you to adopt one child and you one up them and adopt seven (laughs) well thanks 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 for for, joining us jess thank you for having me thanks for joining us sean Mm -hmm. devin it's been a treat This has been the Movie Babies. You can find us at moviebabies.com. Because, Sean, yes. when you don't have time to watch a two-minute trailer, stop casting Johnny Depp. Yeah. Because that's the Movie Babies. Movie Babies.